Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing some clear embossing over clear ink and also over some vibrant colorful dye ink. And I am going to be making a set of cards using three ink road stamps stamp sets. And we're going to be able to see the difference between embossing over clear ink and over a colorful dye ink, as I said, but there's a lot of uh, similarities that the two have, and there's some fun little tips in there for you to use as well. So I think that this should be a fun video and I hope that you enjoy. So let's go ahead and get started. What I'm going to be using today for the two cards, one will be on this yellow piece of cardstock and one will be on this white piece of cardstock. For the white cardstock, I'm going to be stamping in Lemon Cello, which is a color from Catherine Pooler. And on the yellow cardstock, I'm just going to be using clear Bursamark ink. I am going to also be using this clear embossing powder, which I have in this container. It's split in two for no reason. I just happen to have this one laying around, so this is the one I use. Both compartments are the same clear embossing powder. So let's go ahead and start with the Lemon Cello ink. I'm going to get everything prepared. My lemon is going right on my acrylic block. I've got a spoon ready to go in my clear embossing powder, though you don't need it. I find it a little easier. And I'm prepping my cardstock with a powder tool, and this just makes sure that the embossing powder will only stick to where I have stamped and not on random places around the card. I've mentioned this in a lot of my videos, but to be sure that I keep a cohesive look, I make sure that I do stamp some of the images off of the cardstock to make it look as if it's a piece of a much larger pattern. Because this is a dye ink, it does not stay wet on the paper for very long. Catherine Pooler inks especially, I have noticed, tend to stay wet a little bit longer than other dye inks that I have tried but it still doesn't stay wet for as long as say the Versamark ink. So I went in and after every single stamp, I covered it with clear embossing powder just to make sure that I was getting good even coverage. After I went ahead and stamped them all and put the embossing powder over each image, I just set it all with my heat gun. And I'll show you in just a minute, but doing this with dye ink, especially over clear embossing powder, gives it such a fun shine and texture, and I think it works particularly well with these lemons. Lemons are very textured and very vibrant and shiny, as you know, so I think that this actually just happened to work out fantastic. So let's go ahead and move on to the yellow cardstock, and for this I am just going to be stamping with my clear Versamark ink but you will see that I still get a really fun color at the end and I'll show you why that happens. So I'm prepping the cardstock just the same. I do wanna go ahead and note that this is an 80 pound cardstock and the last, the white cardstock is 110 pound cardstock. I just don't have very heavy yellow um, cardstock or colored cardstock, but it works just the same. I just have to be careful when I'm heat embossing. So because this is Versamark ink, this will stay wet for quite a long time. So I'm able to go ahead and stamp the entire pattern throughout my card front, which is really nice. It makes it really simple. And then at the end, I can just dump uh, a bunch of clear embossing powder on top. And then you can actually see the lemons come to be. You have to keep an eye on where you stamp the lemons, especially in the clear embossing powder. Uh, or I'm sorry, the clear ink, but... Um, once you put the powder over it, you can see definitely where it all has been stamped. So I'm going to go ahead and heat this with, um, or set this with my heat tool, and I'm going to keep this in real time because I want you to see when the clear embossing powder starts to melt. You get sort of this darker color, even though the ink is clear and the embossing powder is clear, it sort of gives it this wet look, almost as if you stamped it just with water or something. So it's a very similar color, just a darker tone uh, for the colored cardstock, that yellow, and I just think that is so great. So I'm going to go ahead and color the two queens that I showed in the beginning, and this is from the As You Wish stamp set. I'm going to go ahead and breeze right through this because I'm not doing anything too special. I just like to use um, three different shades, as you may know, 
and I do show the colors here or the Copic color shades that I use um, but I will have them listed in the description as well since I am breezing right through this coloring. I will just let you know that I like to use three shades, a shadow shade, a mid-tone, and then an hi a highlight shade or my lightest shade. And for my hair, I'm just going to be doing small strokes with all three colors and this sort of helps to make it appear as hair, I think. This is a really tiny image, so I really could have just gone with one tone with it all, but I figured if I was making the video, some people enjoy watching uh, coloring, so if you are one of those people, this is for you. It is really fast and sped up, but I didn't want to spend too much time on it because I really wanted to talk a little bit more about the clear embossing on the two different types of cardstock. So I went ahead and fussy cut that out. And now I'm going to be embossing my sentiment, I am Beyonce always, onto some black cardstock and embossing it with white embossing powder. And I have a little tip here. I like to line up my stamps, but because I have a black mat and it's black paper, it's really tough to see. So I just stick a little piece of white scrap cardstock that I just usually always have some laying around and that way I can line it up really nicely and even. So because I'm making two identical cards or almost identical cards, I'm going to set it up exactly the same way and I just made two of those sentiment strips. And now we've got a piece of three and three quarters by five card front and we've got that both in white and in yellow. And I'm going to do the opposite for the matted background of both. So the white cardstock will get the yellow matted background and the yellow cardstock will get the white matted background. And both are going to go on a piece of 110 pound white cardstock A2 sized card base. <laughs> that is a mouthful. So to adhere the card front to the matted card backing, I guess I'm just going to be using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue and I like to use glue for this because it gives me some wiggle room. I'm able to move the card front around and adhere it right in the center with tape or foam tape or a tape runner. I really have to get it right the first time around and that's not easy for me. I went ahead and I adhered the little queen, our queen Beyonce, and the sentiment strip with foam tape to give it a little bit of dimension. And now for both of these card fronts with the matted card background, I'm just going to be adhering them to our card bases. And for that, I'm going to be using craft foam. I like to use craft foam to adhere card fronts to card bases because it gives a lot of dimension without having too much um, space in between when you use foam tape obviously you tend to get those spaces in between when you use craft foam like this just a piece of eight and a half by 11 piece of foam you're able to cut it out to the exact dimensions and then you have no space and I just feel like it looks a little more professional and put together and that's just my opinion on it anyway but here are the finished cards you can see the differences between the two, but the similarities. I love this card set. I love the idea of having these sort of just laying around and you can give them to a friend for a birthday or just because. I love making fun, snarky or fun pop culture cards for my friends that they really can understand and appreciate the design. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and maybe learned a little something about clear embossing. As always, links to my Pinterest, website, blog, and Instagram are in the description, as well as all of the supplies used and the link to the Ink Road blog, which has these cards featured on it. Thank you so much, and I will see you very soon. Thanks. Bye.